Hey guys, I promised a lot of you this video. Uh, many of you saw the last video that I did, which talked about why we personally don't want to go uh, the conventional IVF route. So if you are curious about that, if you want to know kind of more of the um, the cons perhaps, or um, my perspective on the conventional IVF, uh, let me know. I can unlock the link for you to see it. You won't be able to view it without the link uh, at this time. So. Today, I went to the Life IVF Center with my husband, and we actually went to a natural IVF seminar. And a lot of people, including myself, didn't really know that uh, natural IVF is even a thing. And all through my infertility journey, I've been really wanting to do things naturally. And so when I found out that there was something called natural IVF, naturally, I felt like we may have now found the answer that we've been looking for. So it was a two-hour seminar. I'm going to give you guys kind of my cliff notes. Uh, if you want to look at any of uh, the information, you can go to uh, their website. It's lifeivfcenter, and it's .com. Um, it's actually a really, uh, really amazing location um, for us because we're here in Southern California. But even for people who are not local, there are people who come from all different countries uh, to attend uh, this seminar and to have Dr. Yillian help them through their IVF journey. So I'm going to show you guys a chart. And again, if you can't see it that well, don't worry about it. You can see it on the website I just gave you. Um, but on the top, you're going to see the natural. Sorry, on the bottom, you're going to see the natural IVF cycle. And then on the top, you're going to see the conventional cycle. And so conventional is the normal IVF. And uh, as you can see, there's tons of needles. There's tons of medications and, um, and tons of tests and all that. And with that, there's tons of costs, right? There's a big expense for the normal or conventional IVF. And uh, also there's a ton of risks because you are introducing a bunch of hormones into your body, uh, things that are not natural to you. So we actually um, were really interested in the natural cycle IVF because it truly is natural. So if you compare the two, there's actually no needles throughout this entire phase. You actually allow your body to uh, mature the follicle uh, actually just like it normally would anyway. So they let your body do that versus a bunch of medications and chemicals to do that. Um, there is one shot. If you do the, um, want to do the trigger shot, if there is a Lupron injection that you can do. Um, but for those of you who are like me and you are needle phobic and want nothing to do with a needle, there is actually a um, nasal spray that you can do to trigger. So when they, when he said that, I was like, I'm sold because <laughs> I don't want to do with needles. Um, and so there is a uh, egg retrieval that they do. Um, however, they usually don't medicate you. And the reason they don't medicate you is because you only drop one or two eggs and they're only in and out of there in, like he said, a minute. He said it's just over so quickly. And then they would do the ICSI or the uh, ICSI um, where they take the actual sperm and they put it in your egg and they create a uh, blastocyst. Uh, and then once you have an embryo, they transfer it back into you. So that is the part that is IVF. Um, for people like myself who have um, tubal diseases or um, like for my, I actually have blocked fallopian tubes. I have bilateral hydrosalpinx, which sounds like a completely different language, but I know a lot of you in the TTC world know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, matter of fact, a lot of my subscribers have blocked fallopian tubes like myself. So uh, we actually did over 30 things that uh, were in the natural realm to try and get my tubes unblocked. And we did actually have a lot of success with that. If you guys are interested in learning more about that, I do have a video on my channel uh, where I talk about how I'm unblocking my tubes. And uh, I was able to clear out a ton of scar tissue. So that was the good news. The bad news was that I still have those hydrosalpings. There's still fluid in my tubes. And so what I learned today with Dr. Yillian is that they can actually aspirate that fluid. So they go in with a needle and they just um, go, they just aspirate, they take the fluid out. And after that is when you can do your, um, your transfer. So I was really excited to hear about that because I was told that I may have to have my fallopian tubes removed in order to be a good candidate for IVF. Uh, he did say that the fluid will come back in my tubes, but that it wouldn't be an issue once you're pregnant uh, because it doesn't actually cause miscarriage, which was kind of surprising to me. I had actually heard on numerous occasions that you have to have your tubes removed because it'll cause hydrosalpings, um, or excuse me, it'll cause the hydrosalpings will cause miscarriage. And so I was really grateful to hear that, that is not in fact the case. 
The one important thing is that you do not have fluid in your tubes uh, after the transfer for a couple days so that the egg has an actual chance to bury itself um, in your uterus. And if you have fluid that's dripping into your uterus, it can actually like rinse out the embryo. So that's the one time that they want to make sure that you don't have fluid in, um, inside. They can also do a clamp. Um, so if you don't want to have it aspirated, they can clamp it. So that way the fluid just kind of stays almost encapsulated and or you can go ahead and have your um, fallopian tubes removed. If you have your fallopian tubes removed, uh, one of the pros of doing that is that you will um, have a lower uh, chance of certain cancers. I believe it's ovarian cancer, but don't quote me. Uh, but if you have your um, fallopian tubes removed, you have a uh, decreased blood flow to your eggs, and that can affect your eggs in a negative way. So there's always pros and cons. You guys know, I've said this before in my other videos, I'm not a doctor, I'm not at all telling you what to do, I'm just sort of giving you guys the information that I'm learning uh, as I go on my journey. So uh, everyone was super nice at this location. We had a really great experience for our first time. There was actually a woman there who uh, brought her husband and her baby and she had gone through the um, what's called mini IVF. So I'm gonna show you guys this mini IVF chart. Um, so on top, you guys are going to see the conventional, and then on the bottom, you'll see the mini IVF. And um, again, this is on their website, but as you'll see, there's really um, a minimal amount of medication. And so in some cases, he, um, he will suggest that you do minimal IVF, and obviously he does not um, paint everyone with one brush. He does have a very personalized approach with uh, IVF, and so I personally love that he views each person individually. He doesn't have a one size fits all mentality. And when we sat down with him, we actually got, uh, when you attend, first of all, when you attend a seminar, they give one free IVF um, treatment away. They pick a winner. So that was really cool. We didn't get chosen, unfortunately, but there was a couple who uh, was lucky enough to win that. Um, but the, the beauty is even if you don't get that free IVF, it's much more affordable than conventional IVF. I've seen prices for conventional IVF starting anywhere from $12,000. Um, I've had clients who paid $30,000 for their IVF. So it gets really, really hard financially. Um, there is a, a big decrease um, in terms of the prices with the um, natural IVF. And I'm showing you guys this chart, but it's probably a little tricky to see. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you a couple of them. If you wanted to do a natural cycle, uh, with IVF, one cycle where they do the egg retrieval, they do the follicle puncture, um, they retrieve, you know, with that one egg, they do the in vitro or the ICSI, um, they take the embryo, um, make sure it's turning into a blastocyst, they assist the hatching if necessary, they do an ultrasound guided embryo transfer, and then they do an embryo uh, cryopreservation for one year, so you can actually freeze for up to a year. That's $4,950 for their treatment to do all of that. Um, and then if you do get any medications, if they think that you need Clomid, um, you know, most likely he's going to do things as natural as possible. Um, but in certain cases, like I said, if, if, if you are someone who does need something, um, then there's a little bit of additional medication cost. They range it from $150 to $750. And then if you did the minimal uh, stimulation, which is that uh, mini IVF, uh, that's six thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars, and that medication that coincides with that would be two fifty to fifteen hundred. What I also like though is they have package deals, and that's pretty cool because they do a mini uh, IVF package where you can do two. Um, they have a two cycle package, and then they have a three cycle package, and uh, the price range starts at nine thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. So, and then plus the medications. So there is. A major major benefit to um, going through natural IVF because of the cost not to mention you're not pumping yourself with all of the hormones and all of the chemicals he said something that I thought was really interesting um, which was he he sees it that, um, as if a lot of doctors are viewing medications if you think about it this way let's say that um, it's a you have a flower that you're trying to grow and you dump a whole bunch of like manure and fertilization um, on there was it fertilization that he said, sweetie? Yeah. Okay. Um, the flower can't even grow if you just like dump this huge pile 
which in some cases is kind of what like the normal conventional IVF does. It's, it's really just like throwing all this stuff at you. And so this flower can't grow. And in some cases, all of that actually does to a woman. He was saying is it causes stress to her and it causes damage to her body, her hormones and to the egg quality. So sure, you might get 20 eggs with doing the normal uh, IVF, but the quality of the eggs isn't good. You might not even get to freeze one. So it was really interesting. He said what he'd rather do is take that same flower and just sprinkle a little bit of um, fertilizer on it so that it can have um, the sunlight it needs and all that stuff. So it was kind of a good comparison to the natural IVF versus the normal IVF. And so um, there are some requirements that you have to do before you get IVF done. You do an initial consultation. You'll do a physical exam, an ultrasound. Um, they'll do a financial consultation with you. They talk to you about the state law um, blood tests that you have to get before you can move forward. Um, they'll do genetic screening for cystic fibrosis and other tests like that. They'll do an HSG or an SIS, um, which he says the, for those of you who are like super afraid of the HSGs that are, that you guys think it's super painful. He says he'll do, um, an SIS instead. I've had two HSGs and I didn't think that they were even like, I think pap smears are worse than them. So that was my experience. Um, you have to have a pap smear within one year. And if you're over 40, they highly recommend that you get a mammogram uh, within one year as well. Of course, there needs to be a, a semen analysis that has to be within one year. And then um, a ART, for those of you who are in the TCC world, you know what that is. But for those of you who don't, um, it's assisted, uh, of course, now I'm going to draw a blank, assisted reproductive treatment. Um, they have you sign some consent forms. And then you have to sign all your financial forms and turn all that stuff in before you get started. So that is kind of the, the beginning stage when you first go in there. I have some notes. I'm just going to go over a few of them. Again, I'm not going to go over everything. Otherwise, this video would be two hours and ain't nobody got time for that. So um, in 2015, I just want to share with you guys the uh, statistics, the success rates. So in 2015, uh, women who were 34 and under had a 73% success rate for pregnancy. That's amazing. And then for women, and this is by the way with natural IVF um, at their location. So for people who did, who were uh, 35 to 37, their success rate was 72%. For people who were 38 to 40 years old, their success rate was 70%. And for 41 and 42 year olds, their success rate was 65%. Like that's really awesome. And uh, I mentioned that there was a woman that came in and she had done mini, the mini IVF. I mean, she had a lot of people in the room crying because she was just sharing her journey and what she went through to have this little girl that was sitting on her lap today. And so it just gives you hope when you see this and when you hear these success stories. And these rates are really high. You know, for me with my blocked fallopian tubes, everyone who saw me would just like every professional that I saw would say, gosh, you have a really tough situation. We don't know if we can help you. We'll try, but we don't know. And when we sat down, we had a 10 minute free consultation after the seminar with Dr. Yillian, he was totally confident that he could help us. He feels completely secure that we can get pregnant and that I can um, do this without having to have my tubes removed. He thinks that I am an ideal candidate. So that just gave me this overall feeling of peace. I just felt so good about it. And um, after the seminar, my husband and I just looked at each other and we just felt like, yep, this is, this is the answer we've been asking for and praying for and crying for. And, you know, it's been three years, like I said. So infertility has been a struggle for three years. And I feel like we finally have an answer. We finally have our way. We finally found the bridge that's going to connect us to the baby. So um, I have other some other notes here that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, one of the things I wanted to tell you is that frozen transfers, when you transfer a frozen embryo, it's actually better um, there's two main reasons for that. One of them is a fresh transfer has been exposed to all these medications that are still in your system. But if, um, you know, for people who are doing the medications, if you wait until a different cycle without the medications in your body, uh, he actually feels that you have a higher likelihood of success. And then the second reason is that the day five and six embryos are better because it synchronizes with your lining of your uterus. So he can kind of time everything a lot better with a frozen a transfer. Um, in terms of when they go in to get that egg, I mentioned that they go in and they retrieve the egg without giving you medication. Uh, that's what they recommend. That's the safest because you can hold still and it's quick and easy. Um, I know a lot of people like myself are concerned about the pain 
And the woman that was there today, she was um, super honest. She said, yep, it's painful, but they did go through her abdomen for, in her case, they usually go through uh, vaginally to, to get the, the eggs out. They will give you pain medications if you want it. They will do local anesthesia if you want it, and they will put you to sleep if you want it. As far as I'm concerned, even though I'm a super like needle freak, I'm trying to do things as naturally as possible. So eliminating medication as much of the way as possible is probably what I'm going to go for. But I'm like, let's be honest, I'm not really looking forward to this needle situation. So having said that, um, I am going to do another video later on. So please subscribe if you want to be kind of kept in the loop. One of the other videos I want to do is how to choose an IVF clinic. He gave us some questions that you want to ask in case uh, you are looking to do a natural IVF or even just any version of, of IVF. There's some questions that you definitely want to ask, and I'll make a video of that in the future. I'm also going to be making a video on what to eat uh, to make sure your egg quality is great uh, and also to boost sperm before you do an IVF um, cycle because obviously we want to up our chances. So I um, hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, give me a thumbs up. Please feel free to share this with anyone who could benefit from, you know, natural IVF. I honestly think that we are onto something that the world needs to know about. And if it can help just one baby be born and one family be blessed, then it'll be worth it. So hope this was helpful. Take care, guys. Bye.